What's up guys, welcome back to the Review Chronicle YouTube channel. My name is Valerie and today we're back here at the Cross Racial Entertainment headquarters and shortly we'll be speaking with Derek Ho, whom you might also know as He Wei Jian. So he'll be having a concert later on in July and we'll be speaking to him about that as well as a little glimpse into his upcoming fatherhood. Right, Derek. So, yeah. congratulations on your upcoming show, you. Here As I Am. So, uh, how does it feel to be returning to the stage for the first time in six years? It's been a while, and uh, this, this concert, this time around, we're going to dance again after many years. So, that got me really excited and slightly nervous as well because I haven't been dancing and, or practicing at all for, for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. So, it's going to take a while for me to get back into form. Right and shape so i'm excited about that um, because this is one of the main highlights of my career basically some of my favorite fan favorite songs are, are all based on dance numbers right yeah so that got me really excited okay so how is the rehearsal progress going like are you on track back in shape like you said yeah it took me some time to actually you know, remember some of those dance moves. Right. But now, yes, I would say that it took me a while, but I got, I got them back. <laughs> That's great. So, it is known that uh, this concert is based on a full, a full blown concept. It's a full, mm. uh, like, there's a story behind it, and there's like a lot of motivations behind it. So, can you share with us some of those stories and motivations behind the concept of the concert? Yeah. So, for my previous shows it, it, it has always been i mean full shows it has always been you know trying to piece out the best song list that i can and put out one show with my repertoire uh but now this time around i just want to create something that is really um unique and also i want to make sure that it's not just you know a bunch of songs pieced right. together it has to have a certain kind of message uh, behind all this. So which is why Here As I Am is supposed to be a concert where my, my fans or my supporters or anyone who's coming to the concert is for them to sort of like reflect on their life a little bit and then sort of like, hey, so after the end of the concert, hopefully they will feel like, hey, yeah, I've been, I've been through a lot of things myself in my life, like Derek and perhaps this is how I feel about this but they are, they are free to draw their own conclusions yeah so um, how far along the preparation process for the concert would you say you are? I think if you want to put a number to it it should be around we are at about 50% okay. but because there are a lot of other things going on like I would say the music side of it is 80, 90 percent done. Right. But when it comes to the visuals, and we are still working really tightly with the team to make sure that it makes sense, make sure that the entire message is actually brought out properly and clearly mm -hmm. for the audience to sort of like think about what's going on on stage. Uh, it should allow them. It, it, it should make them make feel like, okay, I get what you're trying to show, but what does these things mean to me, okay. visually and musically? Okay. Yeah. So, um, so far with like the music being eighty percent done and being with the concert being about fifty percent done, um, what's the biggest challenge that you face so far putting the show together? I think the biggest challenge so far is to convince people that. Uh, this is what I want to do. Right. Like the idea of the concert itself. Right. It's one of the biggest, um, like, weirdest stare I get when I say I want to do the concert this way was when I say I want to do it in chronological order. Oh. Uh, I told everyone that, hey, I want my songs to be in chronological order. Right. Uh, in the in the, in the order of when it was released, at least most of it. And then they'd be like, huh? But 
you know concerts you need to it, it needs to be high yeah, yeah. first and then it needs to have some, some quiet moments but if you do it chronologically it means that you don't have that kind of control anymore right and then people be like and some of my colleagues they are mostly supportive but then they will it's very normal for them to ask questions oh but what about this concern you know like so it, it took me some time to sort of like convince myself and everyone else that this will work right. because the point of the concert is for everyone to sort of like walk through like to dig up a time capsule and sort of like look back at the things that I've done the things that they have done with me mm-hmm. throughout the years and at the end of the day reflect on what they have achieved right. themselves right yeah throughout so, these years in terms of like the order of the songs you mentioned that you're doing it chronologically mm. would you say that this concert is centered around coming of age or yeah pretty much yeah, yeah i think you're pretty spot on okay. with, with that yeah. so how do you think your music has evolved over the last like say 17 years that you've been in the industry i think if i have to be really honest about what I've achieved uh, there are a lot of the music direction comes from I mean it's a mixture of my own creativity and also the labels uh, direction right right you know like big labels I, I came from a background huge labels and huge labels usually come with their own idea of yeah. how it should be done and we have seen so many cases, even when, even if you are talking about huge international artists. Yep. Yeah. So, I guess right now, especially ever since 2020, when I decided to just do it my way and then just part ways with these labels and mm-hmm. really focus on the things I want, the music that I want to do, especially the message that I want to bring out. Yeah. I so I feel that. The difference here is this, the messaging and the general direction is now much more personal as compared to um, maybe 10 years ago where it's more commercially driven. You know, some of the decisions are pretty much commercial, commercially driven. Like the reason why uh, I, I will sample certain songs, for example. Yeah. So in that case, right, what's the biggest, biggest difference between um, your experience being in a major label and now downsizing into something that is more homely? Honestly, I feel that it's much more... Um, it's, it much, it's much more applicable uh, for this particular time and age. Mm. Because it used to be... There used to be so many gatekeepers um, say just 10 years ago and and when you want to put out a message out there like a new music new new piece you will have to go through the major uh, advert, advertising yeah. um, the marketing stages the planning routes basically yeah, yeah. so um, you blast it out on the radio you blast it out on TV and everything right and then hopefully somebody will pick it up Mm. Yeah, but now it's really more of a one-to-one interaction between you and your fans uh, through the platforms like TikTok or Instagram and whatnot. It's almost like direct messaging. Yeah, you are actually telling people your thoughts rather than you are going. These these thoughts got uh, you know have to go through a third party and then for them to repackage them and then. It's like a game of telephone, isn't it? Uh, it's kind of like you have something to say and then it has to go through... Yeah, and then sometimes you get lost in translation. Right, right. And and now it's so much better, you know, like mm. I've been playing so 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 much with uh, softwares that is out there right now. Like for example, Discord. Mm. Now I have a very strong Discord community where I can basically chat up with my fans directly every single day. You know, wish them a good morning and good night. Yeah. Even play games with them. I just played like drawful with them yesterday night. Nice. So these are the things that 
I value a lot now as compared to uh, say 10 years, a decade ago, I wouldn't be able to do that. Mm. I, was actually, I will be discouraged yeah. uh, to, to do anything exactly. of this sort. Of this no way. Like, re- labels will be like, you have to maintain, maintain distance. that distance yeah. between you and your fans. But now, for me, especially now that I'm becoming a father and fa- I'm so family centric, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. yeah, I just see things differently. Like, mm. but this should be the way. This should. This is always how I want to have the kind of relationship that I want to have with my fans. It's like right now, this kind of relationship. And and that's really awesome, by the way. It's very commendable that you're doing that because some artists they prefer to keep to themselves. So. Are you not afraid of, say, your privacy? Like, what's going on in your mind when it comes to things like privacy as well as your personal life? Do you think you're introducing them into a part of your life that is too intimate? Will you be able to stop it if it goes too far? I think um, throughout my entire career, I've met some really crazy fans. Okay. But then, um, I... It's also through all these experiences that I know exactly what I'm putting out. Right. And it's not, I'm not being reserved about things. Okay. Rather, I'm being careful about certain important information. Make sure that I don't give that out. Mm-hmm. Like where I stay, my phone number. And besides yeah, that, I don't, think, I don't think it's much of a problem. Okay. Yeah. And it's almost second nature to me now that uh, I won't put myself in... in in that position whereby people will find out, oh, so he's been posting his, his meals around this area. He's probably staying around there. I, I'm, I'm even pretty much aware when right. it comes to things like that. Right. It's almost second nature to me right now. Okay. So with that kind of um, training, I would say, uh, actually, I'm not that worried. So it's manageable? It's definitely manageable. Okay. Plus, my relationship with my fans for so many years has always been very, you know, it's, it's, it's a kind of bond where it has nothing to do with crazy fandom right. at all. Nothing. Right, right. Okay. I can literally joke with my fans. I can I even, I can even like uh, say something that I, I can make fun of them and they will be totally fine with that. Okay. And the same thing goes to them. They can make fun of me and we have that kind of relationship like friends. Yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. It sounds like a very, very friendly relationship that you have. A healthy people. one, I would say. Yeah. yeah. So, besides your fans, um, let's talk about your fatherhood. Again, yeah. congratulations. Thanks. It's a big step in life. Um, how are you coping with this new transition? And how are you and your wife and the rest of your family coping? Well, um, working on this concert and preparing for fatherhood, yeah. it's definitely not two things that you want to put together. But... It is what it is now. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm coping well. Uh, I guess uh, our dog Uni is actually helping us a lot as well. Oh, you know, in terms of that's awesome. keeping us mentally sane, like okay. making sure that she, she, she makes sure that she cheers us up every single morning right? oh. when you wake up. Oh, okay, I'm happy now. I'm very tired, but I'm happy. You okay. know, and then we break through the day. Because my wife's pregnancy has, hasn't been like smooth sailing. I'm so sorry. Yeah, like, I'm sorry really to keep, I, I'm sorry to know that too, <laughs> but we are trying very hard okay. to to make sure that she's comfortable and everything, mm-hmm. which is kind of fun as well, because it means that I think this pregnancy sort of like made our relationship even stronger because we end up we don't really have a lot of problems to to solve right. up till now right. from the from the moment we we were dating and all the way till now, but. Now we have problems, right? Like, oh, you know, health issues or whatnot, or pain or whatever. So having all these obstacles sort of like gave us more chance to know each other a little bit more. Like this, so this is how we solve problems. Right. Which kind of make us, make, make our bond even stronger now. Okay. So what are some things that you and your wife are doing to get yourself ready for the new family? We've been, uh, Going on a lot of Zoom um, seminars. Oh, okay. Anonym- anonymously, yeah. So, but basically, my my wife will be in it, but I will be with her. Background. Yeah, right. watching it together. Right, right, right. 
so so that you don't see like a uh, Derek Ho joining the Zoom, right? Yeah, but it's been fun and all this. Like whether we should go for um, CSAC mm. or natural birth, you know that sort of seminar or how to change di- change diapers and all that. And my wife has has been buying me a lot of books right. to catch up with certain things. Like because right. as a father, I think sometimes we we don't do as much research as our wives. I think most of the time, maybe not all the time, but at least for me, uh, she's the bookworm, so uh, she will buy me a lot of books and right. I, I like read this. Yeah, read this. I'll just make sure that I, I do my part. Yeah. Okay. So, um, how ready are you to face the challenges um, that come with having a new family and? How do you think you will juggle balancing being a father and a working musician at the same time? Yeah, the short answer would be I won't be juggling because I choose not to. Right. So after the concert, I will probably take a break, prepare myself, and once our little baby Jay is out, I'm going to take a break and be pretty much a full time dad, at least for a few months, before I go back to anything that's related to music. Because I feel that's very important, and besides, I want to make sure that my wife, you know, recovers well. Yeah. So, so this is, yeah, this is my decision to not juggle at all, all right. because I think I will screw things up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, speaking of you taking a break from music at least for a couple of months while um your baby's growing up, right? Your last official releases are. Love Dictionary, I Ching Zi Dian, and I Found You, uh, Zhao Dao Ni. So, they are both from 2020, which are two years ago. Mm. Will you be releasing any new material soon? Or like, mm. can we look forward to any new tracks during the concert? Like, what's the situation with that? Yeah, so, the thing about, I think, um, staying together with my wife sort of like, it taught me a little bit about corporate world. And that, that means that when you go for leaves, you sometimes do hand-me-downs and make sure that you have something yeah. going on, which is what I actually did. I, I know that I'm going to take a break, right? So I actually prepared some songs during this period of time awesome. for me to release. So yes, do expect more music this year as compared to last year. Uh, but it should be pretty much like how I release my songs uh, at the start of 2020. It's just going to be singles after singles. Right. But all these songs are going to be songs that have significant import, like significant importance in my life. So it's not just song for the sake of doing a it's song. It's not just filler tracks. It's not. It's not gonna be, and it's also a huge waste of money. So filler <laughs> tracks out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, with your new baby coming up very, very, very soon, um, do you have a date yet? Mm, the EDD is fifth of. September, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be another day. Yeah. Right, right. So, um, is there anything that you would like to say to your um yet to come baby in uh, this interview? Like, give it like ten years when they find this video. Like, is there anything that you wanna tell them? Like, you can look in the camera. You can look in the camera. Well, just know that I took a few months break for you, <laughs> and it's all because of you. <laughs> no, no, it sounds like a threat, but. Nah, I'm, I'm just really happy that uh, my baby is coming out and it's all... I think we are really very lucky because we almost like, let's do this and then we, we oh, get it. Okay. And so I feel that we are very, very blessed and I'm, I just, I just very, I'm just very thankful for that. Right. Yeah. So last couple of questions. What are some things about fatherhood that you're most looking forward to? Uh, Mm. Okay, I, I just I just realized that I find some joy in dressing up my my baby. Oh. Yeah, when you know okay. shopping. Right. For yeah. So do you like bulk buy? Um, my wife will do that, mm. but then I really do enjoy surfing the net with my wife. Like this would be suitable for baby J. About this one, right. you know. And then sometimes I go to the extent of. Like, you know what, let's play that game whereby we put our faces together and then you have that, you generate a, a baby right, face. Right. So see what your baby... Yeah, yeah, then I'll, then I'll like. put that face oh. onto those mo- t- child models and oh. my baby looks good in that. <laughs> like, I go to that extent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, dressing up your baby, um, 
sending them to school next time? Yeah, that would yeah. be fun. Okay. You know, so, like, I, I feel like I'm gonna be like the good cop and my wife's gonna be the bad cop. So uh, those drives would be like, you know, you know, mom is sometimes can be naggy, but you know, you just have to bear with her a little bit, you know? Yeah, I love you. You know, that sort yeah. of talk okay. in the car so will be if, fun. Yeah, of course. What if like their classmates come up and be like, eh, your father is Derek Cole. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm past that generation. Okay, I, okay, I believe her. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because I'm not even active on TikTok and but, I don't think much of them will know who I am. I mean, some young people will listen to the Beatles now and be like, oh, I was born in the wrong generation. Oh, that, that would be nice. <laughs> okay, awesome. That would be nice. Looking right. forward to that. Okay, yeah. so um, let's wrap things up real quick. I don't want to take up too much of your time. No, no worries. Um, what are some things that you would like your fans to look forward to during your upcoming concert? Uh, just just to, don't think about it too much. You know, I know there are, there are a lot of marketing uh, things that we say now, but re I really, I just want you to be there and experience it for yourself because the real experience is just being there, absorbing whatever I, I have put up for you and then reflect upon it afterwards. So let's just do that. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm Derek Ho and I'm going to have a concert here as I am at Capitol Theatre on July 16, 8 p.m. So I hope to see you guys there. But meanwhile, I'm going to invite you to subscribe to Review Chronicles YouTube channel and also read uh, our interview on ReviewsChronicle.com.